Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and I'm continuing my Let's Play of Mon Moose Quest, Paradox RPG, Catalyst Chapter. I took the time to listen to the mayors talk about the cataclysm of 30 years ago and I'll give you a little talk while I'm trying to get Merrick here to join my party. 30 years ago there was a great cataclysm that rent the sky and the earth lasting about a half of a day and leaving behind already I'm not done with my story yet well she's in so I'm done grinding right now there were a couple of other characters I think I'll get at a later time but for now let's move on Taking all the encounters off, we run up here and we get to see one of our first field scenes. They decide it's getting late in the day and they want to rest. Luca gets to pitch the tent and make the food and all and nobody else helps him. Elias compliments Luca's cooking saying it's uh, suitable for Lucifina's son. Now, depending on whom you've got in your party, you have people to talk to. Elias, Sonia, and Lime will be sitting around the campfire, and the others will be wandering around as they feel like it. Lime will give you a fish in any cutscene she appears in. Lusa just runs around. Rami just Stands there jumping. And milk lurks over there. Sonia will talk about how she grew up with Luca and was looking forward to this trip and all. Talk about childhood events. Like when she followed him up the mountain and got lost. And then he came and saved her. She was crying and the two slime girls that found her started crying because she was crying. Sonia is kind of silly like that. She is play pleased to be alone with Luca, however. Although the others are kind of surprised to hear they're alone. Elias has a lot to say, though. She's used to guiding heroes, but not quite literally, as in this case. And she's gotten a little bit of memory back about how she came to be depowered. She was hit by the Six Ancestors Curse. Oh, there it is. The Six Ancestors Curse which is a strong barrier that will completely seal a powerful being. In fact, it draws its power from the being's power itself, so the stronger the being, the stronger the barrier becomes. Elias figured out a way to get out of it, however, but it involved depowering herself to this extent over the course of, well, she says a long time, but she doesn't give a specific amount of time. It had effects on her memory, but she's mostly remembering stuff as she needs to. We ask her who could have done it to her, and she names off uh, Black Alice, Promistine, the Kishin, various people from the underworld, oh, some fox. Luca can't help but observe that there are a lot of suspects here. Elias' plan at this point is to head to places that are closely connected to heaven so that she can call upon her angels. She tried to do it once. Oh, right. Cutscene. This is her trying to do it. She calls on her angels to come to her aid. They don't hear her voice, however. She calls specifically Eden and Nikaira and Lucifina. 
But nobody answers. She says she isn't crying. For all that she's a mean person, she gets kind of lonely, I suppose. The next plan is to head towards another close to heaven place, which would be the Amos Holy Mountain. It'll be a while before we get there. Mm, they talk a bit about Alice here. Elias will again confirm that yes, that is Alice the Mao. She's really pleased at seeing Alice depowered, though. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, she can confirm that Alice was not depowered in the same way that Elias was depowered. This is where Elias says, The white rabbit who guides Alice. It's a phrase that comes up a few times. She doesn't remember its meaning, though. Sonia says she's going to pick some uh, medicinal herbs. Elias accuses her of going to the bathroom. Which is probably correct. She is a goddess. Here's another important tidbit from Elias. Luca needs to not trust Stonia. Elias is the goddess of the creation. Goddess of creation who created the world, and she knows all the people living in it. However, she doesn't know Sonia. The conclusion she comes to is that Sonia does not exist, or should not exist. This is again foreshadowing for something I'm not going to tell you about. There is another one she, that we met today. Nero, who stopped time back in Eliasville. He also is someone that Elias does not remember. This really bothers her, of course. She should know everything, but she doesn't. Things will get solved in time. So, we don't need to talk to all of our party, and actually in order to see this in this scene, we just need to talk to Elias and then enter the tent. But Luca decides it's too early and he's going to train in sword fighting a bit. Elias decides that he's not powerful enough and, and uh, he does admit that all his sword play is self-taught. So Elias decides to teach him a new technique. It's not really much, but it's what he can accomplish right now. It's actually a fairly good technique. Now that we've camped out in the field, since we didn't want to spend the night in the field, we get to take one step into town. Now we have something important happening once more. A heretofore unforeshadowed white rabbit. Okay, it was foreshadowed the hell out of it. But she appears. Elias wants answers, but the white rabbit isn't going to give us any. She does question the white rabbit about who exactly cursed Elias. But she says herself that her role is only to guide Alice. And she specifically taunts Elias at making so many enemies who are powerful enough to do this. Elias can't even respond to that. 
so we can ask her about what she wants. She talks about her role at guiding Alice again, and she's actually kind of worried about Elias making trouble, as she's wondering about. And she answers no questions again. Now when she popped up, she asked us if we were disappointed we're not Grand Belia. She wasn't Grand Belia. So what the hell is that about? Luca asks, and he sees a vision. A very abrupt one. Now what the white rabbit can tell us about this vision is that it's a illusion, but it's not an illusion. It's also reality, but it's not reality to you. And this is all the sense she's going to make when you're talking to her. She does mention the fact that chaos is uh, encroaching upon reality. At which point we get some actual good stuff. Elis asks if this chaos is the darkness inhabiting the world that Luca's father spoke of before he left. But the White Rabbit is able to clear up some things. Chaos and darkness are actually two separate things. In order to get chaos, you have to mix light and darkness. Elias also tried to get a grasp on that power, the power of chaos. Elias doesn't remember this at the moment. But then again, if even a goddess could control it, it wouldn't be chaos. It's impossible for a god to, for a god to control. In fact, if you could control it, it wouldn't be chaos anymore. To describe it as being controlled is a contradiction in terms. And this is the end of actual useful explanations. So we get to beat it out of her. She's a foxy one, however, despite being a rabbit. And she throws this battle at us. This is just another instance of space-time manipulation. And maybe alternate reality manipulation? Oh, you got the wrong rabbit again. Ta-ta. This is something even Elias couldn't do at the height of her power. Now we've got to do something in our party who will notice that we just beat her up. The White Rabbit does threaten Elias in this one, but she decides against it. Getting rid of the Goddess would just increase the chaos in the world. So she's off. Mm -hmm. Well, all they can do is research the town. We get to pick up this key that she left behind. Although nobody else can see the key, Luca picks it up anyway. Now this screen here will tell you where something like this happened before, the second floor of the temple, back in Eliasville, even though in this game we didn't actually look at it. The first thing I want to do in town is head to the item shop and buy some harpy feathers. These are incredibly useful. Now, quests in town. We need to track down a... It's called an informant, to give a literal translation, but informant has kinds, all kinds of connotations in English that it doesn't have in Japanese. It's someone who is selling information. So we talk first to this person, next to this person, you have to talk to these people in this order in order to track down the informant. 
who is such a ridiculously useless person that she tried to synthesize something but forgot the ingredients, went to buy something to synthesize but didn't have the money, came over here and gobbled it all away. And finally, let's use this harpy feather, came up here to change her job to gambler in order to gamble better. I never did explain this job list, but in this menu you can talk to the priest. You can come in here, change your job, or change your race, for the characters that can change race. Right now, I believe nobody can. If we had Alice in our party, she's got about six races she can pick from the beginning. But everybody else has to at least master their first race before they can go to on to better races. Everybody can change jobs, however. And you start with a pretty good set. Notice here, these two weren't here the first time we came here. These are the soldier and merchant jobs that we acquired permissions for. Alright, so that's the six NPCs you need to talk to in order to continue your quest. The head priest did not know who the hell uh, the informant was, and they hadn't come by. So we should be going back to Iliasburg and asking around there, but in fact the events are available now so we can go take care of them. The short story is there's a bandit gang that's been troubling the town and they believe and the town believes that these girls have kidnapped the informant. So we're here to uh, beat them up and take her back by horse. They uh, pick some high and mighty names that make them sound a lot more dangerous than they really are. Oh, and we point out some graves, supposedly by supposedly these girls' former victims. If you walk up and examine them, they names like grasshoppers and bugs and things. But more important than that, fighting Goldwyn. She is actually pretty dangerous. She hits for quite a wall, really. So, in one of the few instances of me doing this, I'm going to actually use some of these abilities. In particular, Lime's ability here, the Slime Draw, does a lot of damage to her. You see the SP over there? You start every battle with that filled up halfway. And every turn you can get one or two back. As long as you have SP you can use special moves and as long as you have MP you can use magic moves. And we're going to have I guess, slimes, slime draw as well as doing pretty good damage is also quite cheap. Well, here she pretends to stumble. It's another instance of, of trap that will kill you. More magic. Sonya got enough to do another slime bash. And slime draw here. Ah, that should do it. Gobu is actually the toughest of these four. Despite the fact that she is the first one up. Oddly enough, she is the one I've lost the most to. In fact, I... I think I've got four out of eight fights against her lost. Well, four that I was... out of the ones that I wasn't really trying hard in. But the other three, I've only lost once. Uh, and this is our second of the bandit gang. Puchilania. When the goblin is trying hard, three of my characters would be dead in three of the rounds. I don't think Puchilamia has ever killed even one of my characters. Here's another bandit, the vampire girl. 
the heroes are getting kind of frustrating at beating up little kids. Vanilla has won against my once. This is the one loss, aside from Galb. Luca, you made her cry. <laughs> they really shouldn't be bandits if they're going to cry when they lose. Last one. The dragon puppy. She has all kinds of cute and cool. But also not very dangerous. And here we are. So now we start asking about Amira, and these girls don't have any idea what they're talking about. So we gather them up and they start crying. Here's another character moment for Elias. What should we do with them? Naturally, we should execute them and show their heads off in town. I can think of four girls that aren't happy with that conclusion. Now Elias feels like the bad boy here, so she decides to tone back that particular sentence. Let's stay the execution and sentence them to only 30,000 years of labor or something. In any case, they're going to head back to town and do apologies to the townspeople, whom they actually have been bothering quite a bit. Apologies all around. Sonia apologizes too. Just for fun, I guess. And the various townspeople decide to give them jobs slash force them into labor. But they're actually happy about... But the girls are actually pretty happy about this because they don't really have much to do besides this. And various members start cropping up and asking them for their assistance. Services, rather. Mm. Oh yes, Elias here wonders that they never did find that informant. So, nobody knows what happened there. And thanks for our service, we get a free stay at the inn. This is where Poochie Lamy ends up. We can invite her into our party, but she won't be able to join until other events. Look, it's Alice. The Amahama Dango is a treat they make here that she can't buy. Here we have a little conversation. It's mostly just Elias taunting Alice, because Elias has, you know, a party and Alice doesn't. Really, really rubbing Alice's face in it. Why don't you just make friends with a slime? You know, if you pick Alice, one, the first servant that Elias picks up is a slime girl. Oh, while we're here, there's a small metal over here. Also, this is an abomination and a defense to all things that are good and proper. Kill it. And we're done with that. Now that we've beaten those four bandits, we can start recruiting them. Or some of them. I hate that green-haired guy. He always gets in my way. First, Goba, the goblin. 
She... The work she is doing is running around carrying heavy objects, I think. But the old man employing her is because she is working hard enough and would be useful to us, so he decides to let her join us. Damn you, green-haired guy! If we can talk to her. Ha! Huh? Gotcha. So, now that we've caught her, she joins our party. And now we have to kick somebody out. That guy! That guy that we picked up! Next up we want to recruit Vanilla, the vampire. She's working here in the item shop and selling things. Selling complete garbage. Such as, uh... Shed, shed insect skins, weeds, acorns, pine cones, and rocks. So a kid comes in and looks at it, says it all sucks and leaves. Oh, look who's unhappy. Well, we just gotta help her out. Since we're in the Merchant's Guild from rescuing that merchant in the first town, we can go talk to them. I'm glad we're coming back here because there are a few things I forgot to do in the first video. I made a big deal about capturing that imp and then didn't use her to scenes in this city. Rami can help you recruit Remy here. And she'll just join your party. And the gardener will give you a couple of vegetables as thanks. And you may recall this other imp that I spoke to briefly. This is Remy. So we've got Rami, Remy, and Rumi in our party. Now that Gob's in our party, let's switch her into the front ranks. Because she's higher level than anybody else we have at the moment. The other event here in Iliasville is talking to this man in the garden. He found a small metal. So that makes it all of three small metals you can have up to this point. Which will actually get you something good. If you journey, you know, to the north end of the continent to trade it in. And that finishes our business here. Wait. Oh yes, that's right. I came here in order to help the vampire girl, Vanilla. She's got really crappy merchandise, so we get to ask our merchant friends about good merchandise. But this is just good merchandise for kids. He suggests we get a horned beetle. For some reason those are popular among kids in Japan. And do you remember this? I told you last video that this would be important later. Which, unlike most things I say are important later, which turns out to be like eight hours later, this is important already. This is where we can find the horn beetle. Just another instance of kids getting excited about these horn beetles. Luca gets really excited about this. So this really good item in hand, we can see if Vanilla can find a use for it. That perks her right up. And that kid comes back. He's impressed by it as well and decides to go 
get his allowance and buy it. And now everybody's happy. But Vanilla's learned an important lesson about commerce. Which I guess is making other people go and get your stuff for you. So she, at this point, just asks to join our party. You're in. Oops. I didn't mean to kick her out of my party. Well, in any case, I do need to head back to the Mao castle in order to continue this quest. And while I'm at it, I guess I'll show you the party. And party manipulation mechanic. This is where you can change your party here with the first option. Now I kicked Elias out of my party on accident. Instead I think I will kick out probably the lowest level other character. Let's pick Remy. And now Elias is back in my party. If you're going to use this screen much you'd pr probably be well served to learn what your favorite character's names look like. And... Yeah. I just want Elias back. This is where Vanilla will usually be hanging out, but there's a bad hanging out when she's actually in your party. And you can buy all that stuff again. But what's important is, after the shop screen, she'll talk to you about what she wants to add to her shop. In this case, it's just medicine alarms. In order to get advice on this, we go talk to the same merchant again. He knows everything, but I wonder where his pal went. Is he off in the desert, passed out again? <clears throat> so this merchant has a supply of medicine herbs that he'll be able to talk with Vanilla about. They say there's commerce talk going on, but it, they cut it out, thankfully. And now that we've done that, we get to find out what we need. Go into the pocket castle. Go to the shop again and see what she wants this time. This time she wants the three medicine, the three remedy herbs, we'll call them. Things that, these are ones that cure poison and paralysis and some other status effect. And our only idea is to come back here and talk to this guy again. He does have good ideas though. Since Vanilla is a monster, why doesn't she talk to monsters about these things? For instance, Mandragoras know a lot about medicine. Do you remember seeing any Mandragoras? Yes, yes you do. There are some over in on this hill. In fact, there's one just sitting around as if waiting for you to talk to her. And Vanilla is able to hire her services in acquiring this stuff. And that's that for Vanilla at the moment. If you go to her shop again, you can listen to her talk about what she wants. But we can't get it just yet. In fact, it becomes it'll be available after the next town. But first we need to advance the plot one more tick. Remember this thing we killed? It's still a horrid abomination, but in fact, killing it is not the way to advance the game. Although I do kill it a lot just out of principle. Anyway, anyway, I won't kill it again. This is the informant. I would like to read what this thing says, but actually I can't stand looking at it, so I'm going to skip it all. Now this is the important part. If you have 1500 gold, which I don't think we do, you could buy the information you need, or you can 
this third option for an exchange. You find some information and it will give information to you. More things I don't want to spend time looking at that. But the short version of it is there's a problem in the next town that we get to solve and once we do that we can get our information. It looks like I didn't have nearly enough gold to buy that anyway. So, yes that completes all of my tasks for this run so I'm going to leave off here and see you tomorrow. <laughs>